Okay, so this tutorial is going to be about how you can create these particles. But I'm also going to show you how you can add them to any 2D image. And if I move this blue line here all the way to the end, you can see that when it comes back into the first frame, these particles are moving in a perfect seamless loop. And if you can like and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. And now, let's get into it. Okay, so let's just go A and X and delete everything from our scene. And now we can go Shift A and bring in a camera. And I'm just going to place this camera a little bit away from the center. So I'm just going to bring it back here on the Y axis and just bring it up a little bit like that. So now we can go Shift A again and bring in a plane and just scale up the plane to somewhere around here. And this plane here is going to function as a particle emitter. But before we get into all of that uh, good particle stuff, we need to set up our scene. So I'm just going to rotate this plane 90 degrees like that. And now we can hold down shift and then just place this cursor onto this line by right clicking onto your mouse. And now we also want to right click onto the plane and set the origin to 3D cursor. So now we can just scale it up from this point of origin like this. So next step here is just to move this um, particle emitter a little bit away from the camera. And then we can scale it up by going S and then Y and then 20. So now we can also scale it a little bit on the C here. So go S and C and 2. And the reason for creating such a ginormous particle wall like this is because we are going to make this um, in a perfect uh, loop but more importantly we're going to have a bunch of particles it's just going to look better with just uh, making it as big as this so let's go uh, shift and s and set the cursor to wall origin and then shift a and now we can bring in a particle so i'm just going to use a uv sphere and I want to hide my UV sphere or particle behind this wall. So I'm just going to grab it and then move it behind like this. So now it's time to turn on some lights. So let's just open up the timeline here and go into the compositor. And check this box here for use nodes. And now we're just going to use one node. So let's go Shift A and search for glare node. And then we can just drop it in like that. And here we want to change this from streaks into bloom. And we're also going to set this to high. So to turn on this uh, emission light here, we need to go to the render mode. So from solid mode into render mode. And then just click on this little drop down arrow and set this to always like that. So now we activated this emission. And um, now what we can do is just select our particle like this and then go uh, material, material tool and then uh, new and click on this principle BSDF and we're going to use an emission node. So here we can set the strength to 2.5 and I'm just going to go with a light blue color and if I go into top view here we can just duplicate this particle and then just move it on the X because we want to have particles with um, different colors. So now if I click on this um, new material tool here and then I go into color, I can just change this, this into a darker blue. So you can just go with any color colors that you want, but I'm just going to set up these colors in a nice retro gradient way. So the next color that I'm going to use is um, purple color like that. So what you can do now is just box select these three particles. So make sure that you have selected all of them like this. And then we want to go M. So M and then new collection. So here we can just type in some random nonsense like that and then just hit create. So now it's time for the good stuff here and let's get into and uh, this uh, particle 
stuff. So let's start off with just selecting a particle emitter and then go into particle properties and we want to click on this little plus icon here. So now if we open up the render, so go down to render, we can change this from render as, from halo and then into collection. And here we can just open up this box and then click on this name. So now if I were to play this uh, animation here, we can see that we have particles falling down, but we want the particles to go in a straight line here on the X axis. And to do that, we can um, go all the way down in the particle system and then open up the field weights and set this gravity to zero like this. So now we have particles moving in the right direction. But as you can see, they are stopping here at a certain point, almost like they're hitting a, an invisible, invisible wall or something like that. So to fix this, but before we fix this, we actually need to open up um, a timeline. So since we are going to deal with this uh, perfect uh, loop and uh, have a bunch of particles, I like to use um, a couple of frames here. So let's go to the timeline and set the frame number to 1000. And this will work with um, um, any kind of uh, frame number, but um, um, the reason I'm making such a huge animation here is because I like it. <laughs> and also because it looks better. So uh, if you go control in tier, you can see that we now are actually going to create an animation in a perfect loop that will last for almost, um, yeah, about 40 seconds. So um, let's just uh, select a particle emitter here. And then um, we can start off by just bringing in some numbers here. So what we are going to do is creating uh, two particle system. So we're gonna create one particle system that starts over here and then end in the middle and we're going to overlap it with a second particle system that starts around here and then end over here. So let's just go into the frame start and set this number to minus 500. And then we can set the end to 500 and we also want the lifetime to be 500. So just some easy numbers here so it's uh, easy to remember. And then we want to go and hit this uh, drop down symbol and then go duplicate particle system. And we also want to select the second particle system and hit new material like this. So we want to have two particle systems now with the exact same settings. So, uh, but now we're going to change the second one here. So we want the second one to start off in the middle. So we're going to set the frame start of the second particle system to 500. And now comes the tricky the trick to make this work in a perfect loop. So say that you are using some different uh, frame numbers than me. Remember that to go to the second particle system and multiply the end number with three. So we want to take 500 and multiply it with three, so then we get 1,500, and we can keep the lifetime at 500. So now if I were to go to the end here, you can see if this works, and we have a perfect loop -de loop I'm also gonna show you how you can change the speed of these particles as well, but before we do that, we can just go to the shader editor go to whirl and then just bring down the environment to black like this. So now we have this really cool looking particle system, but we want to have some control over the speed as well. So let's go to the first particle system here. So just click on that and then open up this uh, physics tab and go down to integration. And here we can control our speed by bringing up or down this time step number. So if you want to increase the speed, you want to set this to a higher number. 
So let's try with 0 0.15 and then just go enter. And since we are doing something now in this uh, first particle system and we want to keep the perfect seamless loop, we also need to change the second particle system. So select the second one and then go down into time step here. And we want to set that this to exact same. So 0 0.15 like that. And now if we play it, we can see that the particles are moving faster. So that is great. So I just want to show you one last thing, because when you're dealing with this particle system, it's very common that they will hiccup and do some really weird stuff. So if you have some problems with uh, the animation, what you need to do is actually play around with this number here. So if this is hicking up in some way, just go and um, set the number down like that. And also remember to do it with both of these particle systems like this. And there we go. Now it's hicking up. That is great because I'm going to show you how to fix this. So. Um, Let's try to do that one more time. So just uh, yeah, and there you go. So now so just play around with these numbers here and uh, you will be fine. So I think that is all. Okay, so now that we have a particle system functioning in a perfect loop, it's time to bring in an image. So let's just change the mode into material to preview mode. And now we can go shift A and then bring in a plane. So we're going to place an image onto this plane here. But before we do that, you know, a little bit far up in the space there, we need to rotate our plane towards the camera like this. And we also want to scale it up and then bring it far back so we have all of these particles coming in front of our image so now if you just scale it up to somewhere around here we can open up a shader editor and then click on new so here we're just going to use uh, one node so that is great so just go shift it and bring in an image texture node now we can go open and then just locate a folder with our image. So I'm thinking I'm going to use a different image this time. I'm going to go with a cyberpunk vibe here. And then I can just bring it in like that. And to connect this to the principal BSDF, all we need to do is bring in the color into the base color. And we also want to open up this emission tab and bring the color into the color of emission. So now if you change the mode again into render mode, we can hold down shift and then just bring up the strength like this. And depending on the image, you might have to play around a little bit with this uh, emission strength. So somewhere like that. And if I play the animation now, you can see that this looks pretty cool. And um, if I were to render this out, I can just go to the output properties here and then select the folder where I want my video to be. And I'm actually going to use a video of these particles because it's faster and it's pretty much the same quality. If you were to render with PNG, it would just take uh, a little bit longer time because you need to put uh, the PNG back into a video. So for me, I'm just rendering, rendering this uh, as a video and then I can go down to the encoding here and make sure you set this to our uh, MPEG-4 like that. And what we also can do is go to the render properties, open up the color management. And here you can sort of like play around a little bit with uh, the contrast, set this to high contrast, a little bit depending on your image. And you can also change the style of the color by just experimenting with the, these different, whatever this is, you need to click on it 
and then you find something that works for your image. So I'm just going to go with this um, AGX. And also you can play around with exposure and gamma. And from here we can just go and render and then just render as an animation. So now next part is how we can put uh, a video into a long format video. So how we can stack this video um, multiple times and just uh, create a loop for as long as you want. So let's get into that. Okay, so now that we have a movie, let's get going with some video editing. So just select this little plus icon here and click on that and go down to video editing and then go to video editing again. So this is the video editor and here we have a timeline and all we need to do to bring a video into this timeline is go to add and here you can choose for movie, sound and image sequence. So since we made this into movie, we're just going to select movie here and then just locate our movie file. And then just select it and then go add movie strip. So the first thing to notice here is that a movie file contains of 1000 frames. So say that we want this uh, video to be five times as long. So to achieve this, we can go to the frame range and set the end number to 5000. If I zoom out now, you can see that we have all of this empty space in our timeline. So we need to duplicate a frame here. So just go Shift D and then duplicate it all the way to the end. So now we have our animation for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. And say that you want this to be even longer, just increase the frame number and then just continue on and duplicate it like that. And to render this out, just select the, the output there where you want this movie to go. And next step here is really important. Do not set this to a PNG because I've been having a thousand PNGs on my desktop before and it's not good uh, for the sanity. So make sure you set this file format to FFmpeg video like that and then go encoding and then change this to MPEG4. So now we can just render and render as an animation. So I think that is all and if you could like and subscribe I would really appreciate that. Have a great day and peace out.